Video analysis is priceless for tennis players, and the good news is, thanks to modern technology, it doesn't have to be expensive, it doesn't have to be complicated, uh, it doesn't have to be intimidating anymore. So here's some recommendations and some thoughts based on my experience that can make this as painless and easy as possible. We'll talk about technique analysis, and we'll also talk about match analysis and grabbing match footage. So let's talk about the gear first. First of all, everything you need is most definitely in your pocket. Whatever smartphone you use is good enough to do slow motion video that rivals like the best cameras from 10 or 15 or 20 years ago. And match footage as well, uh, just full motion match footage. So just use what you have. You don't have to buy a new fancy camera, but I'll talk to you about my favorite camera in a second. If you're doing technique analysis, then I really like the app called Omform. And I, I think there's a free version or, or maybe it's $5. This is what I use with my own students. And I like to use an iPad when I do stroke analysis simply because it's, a, it's just a nice, you know, big screen and it, it makes it easy for me to see what I'm doing. But I actually usually pair the iPad with a big display so that my student can see what they're doing. So you don't have to do all that. You can totally just use your phone. Whether you have an Android phone or an iPhone, it doesn't make any difference. Onform is available on both of those platforms. Or if you want for stroke analysis, you can totally just use the camera app on your phone or if you have an iPad on your iPad and just tap the, the slow motion function. And that works perfectly fine as well. I like Onform, but you totally don't need it to do stroke analysis. Now, in terms of gear on the match play side of things, if you're gonna use your phone, I definitely recommend you just go ahead and use the camera app on your phone. And you can buy a, a tripod to set up your, uh, put, put your phone in. And we'll talk about angles uh, a little bit after this. Um, but you can buy a tripod for like $20 on Amazon or at Best Buy or probably Walmart or Target has cell phone tripods or I iPad uh, tripods to be able to just put your device on and just just record. If you want something really nice, uh, you can buy a GoPro. This is my favorite piece of equipment recently. This is a, a new model GoPro, and this is a, a brace or a I guess a, a holder that that connects to a fence. And so these little clips just go onto the fence. This is a kind of next level. I mean, this is kind of what we do. Like we I, we all like nerding out on making the best video possible. This brand new, like top of the line GoPro is $400. You can go on Amazon and get like two or three or four models ago GoPro for $200 and it'll do a fantastic job. The benefit to the GoPro is you can get a, a much bigger, longer battery than your phone will probably do. And you can also put in much bigger, longer memory card than your phone will probably do. And there's a lot of options. It's a very wide angle, a lot of options for um, shooting format and stuff like that. So if you want to get really into capturing your match footage, I recommend the GoPro. But if you're just looking to do like a couple games or a set here and there, and you don't want to record every match and worry about clearing off your memory and all that sort of thing, then totally just use your phone. I, I mean, a lot of phones these days have multiple lenses on the back, and so you can find just the right viewing angle, and it, it's really not that hard. There's all, if you go on Amazon and put in phone tripod, there's all kinds of different mounts and connectors and tripods you can use to connect it to the fence or to the top of the curtain or, or whatever. So there's some, some thoughts as far as gear. Uh, we obviously use you know, professional cameras, but we also use GoPros. We also use iPads. And so this is stuff that, that is super readily available. In fact, you might already own a lot of this equipment. It's just a matter of getting familiar with it for the purposes of tennis, maybe getting an app, a $5 app, but that's about it. If you're enjoying this lesson, then go pick up a copy of my new book called Essential Tennis, because this video is taken right from it. There's 38 chapters full of insights that can help you improve your game, as well as many other videos just like this one that can show you exactly what to do to take your game to the next level. The angle you record from and the position you record from definitely makes a big difference. So this is like a, a free, you know, non-tech, way to really upgrade your whatever it is that you capture so that it's as valuable and useful as possible. Let's talk about technique analysis first. On the technical side of things, I like to shoot directly to the side for ground strokes and for volleys. 
So a forehand ground stroke, a backhand ground stroke, a forehand volley, a backhand volley. I like to shoot directly to the side. So if it's a forehand and a right-handed player, I'm shooting directly to the right. Backhand for a right-handed player, I'm shooting directly to the left. And I like to try to um, frame things or place the camera so that when the ball is uh, being hit, ideally, the player is taking up as much of the screen as possible. That way, you're just gonna get the highest quality image. You're gonna be able to get the most amount of detail and an analysis out of it. So those are my best practices for ground strokes and volleys. For serves and overheads, and this is just kind of personal preference, I like looking directly behind the student. You can take this angle on ground strokes as well. If you're looking to uh, maybe analyze uh, spacing or contact points, you might wanna shoot directly behind the, the point of contact. In terms of serve mechanics and like service motion and overhead motion, I like looking from a back angle. It's just what I've grown accustomed to, but there's a lot of cool things you can see from a side angle on the serve as well. That's just kind of my personal preference. On a serve for placement of the camera, make sure you go all the way to the back against the fence or against the curtain. Usually at most standard tennis courts, there's kind of just enough space to be able to see the toss and contact and all the way down to the feet on the bottom. So make sure you have enough room that you can see the toss, you can see the whole motion. You can obviously see contact as the arm and the racket reaches up. That's your goal when you do technical analysis on the serve. When it comes to point play, an ideal position is directly behind the center of the baseline and slightly elevated and as far back as possible. If you're really lucky, maybe you play in an indoor facility where there's a viewing area and you can put a, a camera right up in the viewing area. I mean, that's perfect. If uh, you're not in an indoor facility, there's all kinds of clever uh, mounts and things that you can use to attach a, a GoPro or your phone to a fence. This is de these are designed for a chain link fence. Uh, there's other kind of hook type devices that you can put a, a phone or a GoPro on and hook it over the, the top of a fence or over the top of a, a, a cable that holds up a, the divider or the tarp in the back of your indoor facility. So you can look for those. There's a, there's a huge range of different, uh, you can do a search for tripod, for mount, uh, phone mount or camera mount, fence mount, so on and so forth. And you can just see, you can, depending on your particular setup, your particular home courts, you can find something that's perfect. But ideal spot is directly behind the middle of the baseline and at least a little bit elevated. Uh, you don't need to have it super elevated, but I would say eight feet up off the court surface is probably about right. If you can get it nine or 10 feet above the court surface uh, with a little bit of climbing or a, a ladder, that's probably about you know perfect but it doesn't have to be nine or 10 feet up in the air. At least six or seven or eight feet, somewhere in there is a, a, good, a good height to give you a little bit of perspective to see the other side of the court as well. So there's some best practices, some ideas, some practical tools, where to get the equipment that you need. That's really every, I basically just told you everything I know about how to record video <laughs> for tennis. There's really nothing else that you need to know. Uh, if you just follow those best practices and use some of the gear and some of the tools and some of the apps that I just talked about, from there, it's just a matter of experience. The more exposure you get to it, the more comfortable you'll be with these kind of, with the technology, but also comfortable with being in the environment with a, a camera, uh, comfortable with seeing yourself, uh, seeing your flaws and the positives in your game. You'll, you'll get used to all that over time. And after a while, you'll only see the positives and then it becomes just a really powerful tool. I hope you use video, get out there and put it into practice. You'll be happy you did. If you enjoyed watching this lesson, then please consider going to order my book called Essential Tennis. You can get it on Amazon or Barnes and Noble or anywhere else books are sold. And you can get it in paperback, hardcover, audiobook, or Kindle as well. And it's full of 38 chapters, full of tennis insights for doubles players, singles players, that really get down to the core essentials of how to play better tennis. It's received some incredible feedback from world-class players and coaches, which I'm super grateful for. So if you enjoy my lessons, and this one in particular, which is taken right from the book, then definitely go check it out and order yours today. Thank you so much for your support.